Now to Innovators, where we look at some of the groundbreaking innovations that are transforming the world. Every day, about 20 people die waiting for an organ transplant. So imagine if human organs could be grown in labs or even assembled by machine. It would save thousands of lives, and it's not as far-fetched as you might think. This week on Innovators, Emily Chang takes a look at the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine, where Dr. Anthony Atala has already started manufacturing human organs. It looks like something Hollywood dreamed up, a futuristic machine that can print out human cells. But this is the latest biotech breakthrough. First, it prints a layer of kidney cells, then adhesion cells that will glue the layers together and eventually produces a tiny, functioning kidney. You know, there's such a major need for organs today. Dr. Anthony Atala is leading this biotech revolution. The number of patients on the transplant list has increased uh, and has doubled in the last decade. So to meet demand, Dr. Atala is creating man-made organs. His research grew out of seeing patients reject transplants and implants. So the concept really was very simple. You know, why not use the patient's own tissue? Before they started printing organs, Dr. Atala's team learned to grow them. First, they make a scaffold with a dissolvable biomaterial, then they saturate it with the patient's own cells. The scaffolds are baked at human body temperature. He's made ears, fingers, muscles, urethras, and even bladders this way. Sometimes he needs to teach the body part how to behave in the human body. For example, we create the heart valve, and we then have it in a bioreactor which will exercise the heart valve and make it do what it would do regularly. Still, most of what you see here is not yet approved for use beyond medical trials. Luke Masella was in one of Dr. Atala's earliest trials. When I was 10, I went into kidney failure and I wasn't a candidate for a kidney transplant. He was born with spina bifida and he needed a synthetic bladder so he could get a donor kidney. I pretty much needed this surgery uh, or else I don't really know what my life would have been like after it. It could have been, I would have had to been dialysis machines for the rest of my life. Ten years later, the engineered bladder still functions well and allows him the freedom to play sports. But because clinical trials take so long, Dr. Atala has only done a handful of these surgeries. But finally seeing these technologies work, it really uh, inspires us to move forward. So he moved on to printing organs. We started out by using your typical desktop inkjet printer. He rigged the printer to print in three dimensions. This is a tiny heart structure. Then last year, he put the bioprinter on steroids. It takes a few hours to print the entire kidney. It's a true game changer. Christine Gorman expects this technology will save thousands of lives, but only if it can match the complexity of our own kidneys. The kidney doesn't just filter waste, it also regulates blood pressure. Can his synthetic organ do the multiple jobs the kidney does? We're working very aggressively on that, but of course that's still years away. At least a decade, he says. In the meantime, Dr. Atala is working on a bioprinter that heals burn victims. He says this one will be on the market soon. And until everyone has access to the organs they need, he says he'll keep asking these questions. How can we increase the number of tissues we bring to patients? And how can we make more patients benefit from these technologies? And Dr. Atala's work doesn't end there. He's now working on an engineered liver as well.